Hello, this is Sarah, and in this video, I will demonstrate the four best way to save files in Pro 3D and explain why. Okay, let's get started. So first and most important, we want to save this file as a project file because this project file contain everything that you have worked on. For example, the fabric texture as well as fabric property and any measurement. Not only that, also save avatar poses, which you can come back and work it on later. So to save this, I will go to file and then select save as and we want to select save as project. And then I will name this knit top pattern side tall and let copy this and I'm going to click on my desktop and create a new folder and I'm going to paste that in there and then click on create. Then I will click on save. Number two most important way to save this is a garments file. So the garments file allows you to sell this top and only this top, not the avatar nor the motion nor any poses. However though, the file itself still contain the fabric texture, the fabric property and all the annotation and everything that you work on except the avatar, okay? And not only that, when we use the auto grading to grade the pattern, you want to save this as a garments file before it work properly. Okay, so let's save it as a garment file. Simply go to file and then click on save and then select garment. After that, I'm going to name this garment and then paste. After that, navigate to my folder and I'm going to click on that folder right there. And then I'm going to click on save. Number three, we want to save this garment as a DXF pattern. So DXF pattern allows you to save this pattern here, but not the fabric nor the avatar. And it is great when you want to, once again, sell them on Etsy and as well as many people out there have some software that they can bring this DXI pattern into their software. And not only that, you can bring it back in to Clow and you can practice sewing and fitting the garment because you will bring them in only the pattern, no sewing, no any other thing except sewing and the information on to the pattern. Okay, so let's save that. I will go to file here. So instead of save as, we want to come down here and export and then select DXF. And over here, I'm going to type in once again, DXF, and then I will paste this. And by default, I already have the folder open. So I'm going to click on save. So before I click on save, be sure this is on DXF file format though, and then click on save. All right. So by default, I have right here, DXF format is DXF dash ASTM and size format, great niche, millimeter scale and 100% do not rotate. That's perfect. So important part here, we want to duplicate notch on seam allowance. Okay. And then leave everything as is and I'm going to click on OK. Last but not least, PDF format. PDF format is also important when somehow we want to bring it back to Clo. Clo will take PDF format as well as people who actually like to work with Adobe Illustrator, they can bring this file onto Adobe Illustrator or you can bring it to Adobe Illustrator and then place it onto the PDF template so you can print this pattern with your home printer. Okay, that is very cool. So I will show you how to save it as a PDF format. Once again, go to file and instead of select and save as, we will go to export and then come down here and we want to select right here, Adobe PDF, click on it. And after that, I will type it once again, PDF and then underscore and then paste this name. And I'm going to navigate to my folder and knit top pattern here and then click on save. And then be sure this AI file PDF that's perfect and then click on save. And right here, this is pretty important. So I have my default here. The margin is 10 centimeter. It's just to be safe since we are saving this and bring it into Adobe Illustrator later. We don't really have to vote it how much the fabric cost and so on because we will drop this file into Adobe Illustrator. And by default, I have scale millimeter, 100%, do not rotate. Pretty much check this entire box, okay? And then show images, graphic, perfect, check that. And down here, we want to have the pattern annotation and then right here, 2D measurement if you wanted to or you don't have to. And right here, button or buttonhole right there, we want to check. And after that, I'm going to click on OK. Finally, we finished saving those four file formats. 
Next, I'm going to show you how to bring them back into Clove. First, I will go to File and then click on Open and then go to Project. After that, I will navigate to my file right here. So if we look at closely project file, we have dot z p o j compared to a garment file, we have dot p a c. Okay, so I'm going to click on the project file and then click on open. And by default, I have file type load is open, which is perfect garment avatar and render property. I'm going to click on okay. So as you can see right here to the right on the object browser we have the fabric as well as the fabric property and the avatar so next we want to open the garment file to do so i will go to file and i'm going to click on new project first and then go to file once again and i will come to open and then select garment and navigate to my garments file in this case right here dot zpac click on that file and then click on open okay so as you can see right here, the difference is between garment and project file. Garment file, we don't have the avatar. And to the right, we still have the fabric property and fabrics, as well as all the measurement and the annotation that we have. So next, we want to open the DXS file. To open the DXS file, first I will go to file and then click on new here to close the project and then go to file. So instead of select open, we want to select import and select DXF. Next, we want to click on that DXF file and then click on open. And right here, it is important to check this important pattern annotation box, auto trace as internal line, swap cutting line and sewing line and include notches. And right here, ratio box is checked. So leave everything as is up here and the basic. And then we want to click on okay. And there it. So as you can see right here, this is the pattern that we imported as a DXF pattern. We have pretty much everything on the pattern, but no avatar, no fabrics. Okay, so next let's close that file. I will go to file here, click on new project, and then click on no here. We don't want to save that. And then we'll go to files again. And this time, once again, come to import. So we want to select Adobe AI PDF. Click on that. And right here, click on that PDF file and then click on open. And okay, once again, guys, open, perfect, millimeter and 100% scale, do not rotate and import as. So we want to import as baseline and then click on okay. So here we go. So by the way, guys, this texture right here is a texture, okay? We don't have fabric property come with it. If I click on right here, look at down here, no fabric property, only the texture. And the pattern itself, we actually have less information on the pattern. So this is perfect when you want to import this into Adobe Illustrator. But for Clove, we can still use this pattern to sew, but we don't have as much information as the DXF pattern. So if you want to use this pattern, yes, you can in Clove, but I would recommend import it in with the DXF pattern. So this is conclude the four best ways to save file in Clove 3D. I hope this helped guys. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. This will make the video more accessible for those in need. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in the next video.